morning, Kim. Oh, hey there, Susie. I didn't even see you outside on the red carpet. Well, I know it's a bit early, but I know there's thousands of the community's movers and shakers out there ready to join us for the morning. I am so excited to be hosting the annual Shawnee Mission Education Foundation Fall Breakfast right here coming at you live from Shawnee Mission South and their new Performing Arts Center. I'll tell you, Susie, I was a theater kid here at South, and this is way better than anything we had back then. I'm a little jealous. I think I'm a little jealous, too. On behalf of the Foundation's Board of Directors, it is my pleasure and honor to be here with you all today to celebrate our kids, our teachers, and the Shawnee Mission community. And we would like to thank today's breakfast sponsors for supporting us throughout the year. Absolutely. It's been a little bit of a strange year. I think that's an understatement. Okay. Uh, COVID has certainly made us all change our daily routines and adapt. There's no doubt about it. But fortunately, one thing has remained constant, and that's the support of our Shawnee Mission community. You are absolutely right. We have incredible donors and sponsors who are making today and all of our programs possible. And to them, we are so deeply grateful. I hope you had a chance to see them on the pre-show screen uh, before we came out today. I guess I just have one reminder for the community, which is if you haven't voted already today or in the mail, please go vote sometime today. And I think with that, we're ready to go to the movies. So let's go in and see the world premiere of the sure to be award-winning film, SMSD Strong. Let's do it. <laughs> March 2020, and across the nation, schools closed, businesses shuttered, and people were isolated at home in the midst of a global pandemic. But in one school district, with a robust plan for the future and a strong education foundation, there was hope, there was optimism, and there was courage. Because we are Shawnee Mission Strong. The summer of 2020 was a time when we all felt the frustration of injustice. Yet, the Shawnee Mission School District embraced and celebrated our diversity. Grants provided an assortment of literature to help build an equitable and inclusive culture. We know that children flourish when they see themselves on the pages of books. We want all Shawnee Mission students represented in the books they read. I like reading because you can explore different stories even though you're not experiencing them. You can kind of experience it in your head while you're reading. I like reading because it like expands your vocabulary and uh, it can help you through some tough things. We have a lot of books and a big variety of books and different genres and authors so you can always find a good one to choose from. Stories have a way of um, 
building relationships. These texts are rich in uh, characters and stories that relate to them, which then allow students to become more engaged. And um, the whole goal is to increase the passion students have for uh, literacy. We found that there was a section of our population that um, we weren't seeing the growth in the reading test scores that we were hoping to see and that we saw with other groups. And so we looked at it and decided that the real reason was they weren't seeing themselves in the books that we had on our shelves. We wanted to make sure that we had diversity in many different ways, whether it's race or um, socioeconomic or um, the different cultures and also different um, learning needs. And our goal, our whole goal with the grant was to get books with more diverse titles, more diverse characters, more diverse settings in, into the hands of our students. When I was 13 years old, I was very much a reader growing up and um, I struggled a lot finding literature that really reflected my own experiences. So this library has been a labor of love for years. Uh, this is something that I dreamed of and thought of. Part of our strategic plan is to build a uh, inclusive culture. This project uh, helps us uh, as one, I think, tool that can help us continue to help kids recognize that we see them uh, and that we know that they matter. And, and the way we're gonna demonstrate that is through the text that we put in front of them. I'm glad that this library is here because it's like my safe spot, my safe zone. Like being here, I just feel very comfortable. Miss Madrigal's room smells like any Hispanic household. So that's what I like about it. I remember coming one day and I said like, Miss Madrigal, why does your room smell like that? And she was like, does it smell bad? I'm like, no, it just smells like every, Hisp every Latino household. I like the Latinx literature library because I think that I get a lot of books from there. Like my mom brings them home to me and like I read them all for like months. And I think I just like have a really good reaction to them because I really enjoy them. And I think they're just a great way to learn more about where I'm from. Project Lit is a literacy initiative whose goal is to get really good books into the hands of our young people to encourage them to read for fun and enjoyment, while also showing them that their stories have value and that the stories of people who might not be like them have value. You, you have a greater chance of building relationships across cultural lines uh, when you have some, some rallying point. Uh, and, and I know that you know, not just black and brown children engage in Project Lit, but st students of all colors. The Shawnee Mission Education Foundation has been wonderful to work with. This year I was awarded um, a grant um, to help our Project Lit chapter here at Northwest keep going. So um, we're going to use that to purchase books for the students to read and those books will then be, once the students are done with them, um, will be redistributed into our English teachers' classrooms for their classroom libraries so that even more students can read them. Um, we are also going yeah. to um, use part of the grant to build like a, a library for our ELL theory. students. When I knew this that I wanted to start building a library, that was the first place that I went, was SMEF. And they were so incredibly generous. I believe uh, it was $3,500 that they donated and I was able to use that money to purchase books and also to take some of the students uh, in my U.S. Latino Literature course on field trips and bring in guest speakers. And so it really just kind of got the ball rolling. We just absolutely love connecting kids with the right books. And so when a child finds a book that they really connect with, they just love to talk about it. And it can be a life changer for them that maybe they may not feel so lonely or maybe they may not feel isolated or um, quite so different when they see themselves in these characters. We would love to expand this and, and do it for younger grades, second and third grade, and we really believe it was just an amazing thing for our class. Our, our test scores in those subgroups went up. We had 100% of our minority groups the following year that, um, that met their growth in the, at the winter math test time, and we thought we definitely believe that that was because of the books that we were given. A lot of them are like really inspiring books, 
and um, some of them are about like really cool stories. So I really like the ones in the grant. These are probably one of my favorite books that I've ever read. I find them very interesting and fun to read. This book taught me like always be confident and don't doubt yourself. It just makes me feel like I belong here. You know, like what, what kind of person wouldn't want to feel like somewhere that they belong. Over the summer, as the COVID-19 numbers increased, many students found themselves isolated and alone. But there were students through who grit and resilience connected and continued to build their relationships, and they thrived. Our students are empathetic and engaged members of the global and local community. It's actually a great story because it combines a lot of things um, that are visible, uh, that what we do at school, and some things that are invisible. So um, our instructional coach is amazing. His name is Christopher Barikmo, and Mr. Barikmo um, does a lot of seed planting. That's basically what he does. Um, and so he had, he had told me about this book, The Coffee Bean Book, and how, um, honestly, we were, we were talking about maybe using it as a professional development um, item for faculty. Uh, I knew that this was something that we could use to work with our faculty and our staff at Shawnee Mission East. The story of making a choice. Uh, what kind of transformational leader can we be in our school and our classroom uh, really resonated with me as an instructional coach in a way to help our teachers think about how they could become transformational change leaders in our own schools and classrooms. So I read the book and of course this is when the uh, pandemic hit and schools are closed but that thought was in my mind um, which was a particularly good thought and so that the, if you're not familiar with the coffee bean book it's talking about adversity and um, it, with, the, with the metaphor of hot water and what does hot water do to certain items and so um, you know if you think about if you throw a carrot in hot water it will get soft and wilt um, and um, an, uh, an egg would get hard um, but a coffee bean um, kind of makes that hot water better. It permeates and makes something better with what it's been given. And so it's, it's got this metaphor, but it also, um, it, it, in the book, it, it refers to um, a young man who is a football player and a good student and has a lot of expectation on him and how this coffee bean metaphor a teacher brought to him and um, it spoke to him. And so as I'm reading it, I can't, I, I, I know I'm supposed to be thinking about professional development, but all I can think of is one student um, named Lee Marshall, who is this kid, and he's um, a big presence and a great kid, and a lot of people know that. He's a great football player, but what I think people sometimes don't know is it's not just that Lee has it all. I think that if people looked at Lee, that's what they'd think, but what Lee has that's special is he's a coffee bean. He's had adversity, he's had trouble in relationships with a class, with a teacher, with life, but he doesn't get hard or mad or angry. Um, and he doesn't get soft and back away from a challenge. Lee makes everything around him better. And anyone who's ever been in his presence knows that you feel like an important person when Lee's around. And he's just really special. I think it has something to do with the fact that her and I have a pretty close relationship at school. And she knows that like, I'm on the football team. And then she also, we're kind of um, family friends outside of school too. So I think all that just connected some dots with her and made her think of me. I also selfishly missed students and so I thought I'm gonna bring this book to Lee to his house <laughs> and I thought I was just gonna drop it um, on his door but I saw him in the window and he, he, he kind of ruined my surprise that way but it was great because I was able to um, talk to him and so we of course I have a little bit of an idea that was born from an idea from Mr. Barikmo and Lee made it better, just like a coffee bean does. Hit home with the fact that there's probably a lot of kids in East and outside of East that are going through what the character in the story was. And it just made me want to share the story with people and know that they can control what they can control and not to let whatever is affecting their life make them a different person. He picked um, a peer and brought that book to them with a nice note, and then that person did it. And so instead of just one nice moment, he created all these ripples. Um, and um, I, again, I, I, I knew that he was special, but he didn't know. And so um, it's amazing to me sometimes that we need to remind kids and to recognize for them those special and unique gifts they've been given, because it's hard to figure out when you're figuring out who you are. Once 
you read it, it will always kind of like stay in the back of your mind of something to like live your life by. And it really like reiterates like the fact that like you are really in control of like your situation and how you take life and how other and how you can influence other people too to like have a positive attitude and just like work hard and be like the right person that we all know how to be but aren't necessarily all the time so it's just a great reminder to keep on the right track. Well I was actually working from home during the summer with COVID and I was scrolling through Twitter one day and I saw that Lee had been covered on the news um, that he had taken the initiative to uh, read the coffee bean book and then he was taking it one by one to uh, some other students at his school and so he would drop it off and they would read it and then he'd drive back and pick it up and uh, disinfect it and then take it to the next person and so I thought you know this is a student who is really out there making a positive difference he probably needs a few more copies of the book so I just uh, made sure to uh, know where, what his address was and ordered them off of Amazon and had them shipped to his house and he was really surprised and happy but I thought here's a student he's not on He's not on social media complaining about being stuck at home or about how COVID has negatively impacted him. He's out there making a really positive change for other students. And so um, I just think he's incredible and was more than happy to do that for him. This caught me by total surprise. I had no idea she was doing that. Um, she just was so kind to do that. I mean, I just, I'm still, lost for words on that. The first day of Leadership Shawnee Mission, he walked in and really um, started developing those leadership skills. He had the respect of his peers, the respect of the Leadership Shawnee Mission facilitators, and he's a great public speaker and really just stood out as a leader among leaders in that group. And so when we thought of having, for the first time ever, a student co-host for the breakfast, he seemed like a really logical choice. And of course, handled being in front of 1,500 community members, business leaders, and his fellow students with absolute grace and good humor and didn't even miss a beat. I try to be a coffee bean. I, some days I probably am more of a coffee bean than others. Some days I might be the carrot and just get boiled, but I really try to be a coffee bean. I'm, I'm hoping that this book, and again, thanks to the foundation that we were able to, to provide more copies, so it's just kind of trickling out there um, students are writing a nice note in the book and then passing it on um, and we've talked about what does that mean to be a you also get a sticker and if you have that sticker it indicates you're a coffee bean not only as a visual reminder to yourself but to others that we're in this together and and we have to pick each other up sometimes and keep moving forward and remember to be positive not to be too soft not to be too hard but to be the coffee bean and that's the best that we can do please go read it it's, it's a life changer So there's one more part of Lee's story that we haven't told you yet. Take a look. So you will remember Scholarship Shawnee Mission, um, the program that we do that brings scholarship offers to students. And our week to reveal all of those scholarship offers is next week. Right. But we thought, since you are a good friend of the foundation, that we, you should be the first student in Shawnee Mission to get your scholarship offers. Okay. <laughs> and so I have them here. Um, they're from so many schools I can't count them, oh, but wow. they total $899,000 oh <laughs> in scholarship offers oh my gosh. to a lot of schools. <laughs> so, so I want to give you those. <laughs> Can I like hug you? Okay, yes. thank you. <laughs> Social distancing hugging. <laughs> thank you so <laughs> you much. You are so welcome. Oh my gosh. You are awesome. You are an incredible student. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Regardless of what happens oh with football, you've got a lot of options and a lot of schools that really want you because of your academics and your leadership. So. Thank you so much. You are so Thank welcome. You so much. In 2020, when the virus hit, everything shut down. No sports, no concerts, no restaurants. Life as we knew it was put on pause. But even then, during it all, we had community partners who were there for us. They kept us going. Heroes like our teachers and healthcare workers.
We are a longtime supporter of Shawnee Mission Education Foundation from Advent Health. And this truly means to us that we can assist the Educational Foundation in providing opportunities for their students to gain work knowledge um, here at Shawnee Mission, but it also helps us to, um, in our support, to assist kids in growing and learning and creating a pathway for them. So Project Search is a very unique school to work transition program that's designed to assist uh, students with um, challenges, the opportunity to get work experience for a year. This is given to individuals with disabilities who have one more year of high school eligibility left and it allows them to rotate through different departments here at Advent Health Shawnee Mission. The medical health program that uh, Shawnee Mission School District has um, allows us to really work with their certified nurse assistant program in allowing those students to come in to see what it is like to work within a healthcare system. And then hopefully we're able to, once they graduate from that program, really bring them in as certified nurse assistants. This has just been a challenging time over the past few months. And as we're looking towards the future and as we're looking towards what our programs are gonna look like here at Shawnee Mission, we are highly focused on our community involvement and the real world learning that our students need. And so working together with Shawnee Mission School District is so important because that provides those students the opportunity to learn a real world career. Supporting the Shawnee Mission Education Foundation means investing in our community. At Advent Health Shawnee Mission, we believe that that is an important part of what we do. The mission of the Shawnee Mission Education Foundation is to advance scholarship and leadership to enable all Shawnee Mission students to achieve their potential. The roles that the Foundation's partners play are crucial to our success. As far as funding some of our initiatives in supporting our programs, the business leaders that have our students into their businesses for the internship opportunities, our college partners who provide the scholarships through Scholarship Shawnee Mission. Without them, we could not do what we do today and what we want to do in the future. They're crucial. Real world learning is the true definition of partnership as I see it. What we are trying to do um, in this partnership is bring real world learning experiences to all of the students in the Shawnee Mission School District so that they will be ready to go out into the community and have those real world experiences like internships under their belts by the time that they graduate from high school. The foundation realizes that a goal of the district for sure is career readiness for all of our students. And the foundation's work through Leadership Shawnee Mission was a first step towards that as far as being able to provide internships and business connections for the students who participated in Leadership Shawnee Mission. The partnerships that I have seen grow through my time on the foundation, and this is partnerships with the business community, it's partnership with the parents, it's partnerships with the teachers and the leadership in the district. They continue to grow each year and to me I think that is exactly what I want to see and it makes me confident and excited in the future of the foundation, in the future of the district and pointing it back to my thing at first, the future for our kids in the district. During this time when school shut down in the spring semester of 2020, colleges and universities were struggling with the pandemic and moving to remote learning. But in Shawnee Mission, students received a combined total of more than $1.7 billion in scholarship offers. Hi, Heaven! How are you? I'm Kim, I'm with the Shawnee Mission Education Foundation. The foundation um, has a program called Scholarship Shawnee Mission where colleges and university partners offer really bright and hardworking students scholarship offers before the students have even applied. But their combined scholarship offers from all of these colleges um, is about $1.1 million Are you for you. I am serious. So <laughs> congratulations, Evan, <laughs> on all of your hard work. Here you go. Let's make a difference together. Let's make a difference together. 
Scholarship Shiny Mission is a way to help students get a grasp on the various options that they may not have otherwise considered. We're not really aware of things that can befall students during their secondary education through life. And this is a way to a scholarship opportunity coming their way that they realize, I didn't think I had the qualifications, but I got opted in and lo and behold, I have some offers. So I am worthy of it. I can go to college. I can get a scholarship. And that's, that's huge for us. I think this scholarship is the first step to set me on the right path. I want to do pre-med when I grow up. So like, um, I've, I'm always worried about how I'm supposed to pay for that. I was like, I'm always like, should I change my major and stuff? But this is definitely Make sure, basically making my dreams come true. The fact that the district is putting in effort and time and their energy to, you know, help out students and, you know, offer them scholarships, you know, out of surprise, you know, like today. I just think it's amazing that our district does that and that we are able to do that for the people in our district and that, you know, they care about us enough to want to do that for us. I mean, to be honest, it's going to probably give you, like, free college, which is insane. Like, who can say that they're getting free college right now? great opportunity for kids, especially with me. I live in a low-income family. It's harder for me to get scholarships and honestly didn't know that I had the grades or requirements to get scholarships, so it, it's great. Like It gives you an opportunity that I didn't know I had. One for the money, two for the show, three to plant the seed, four to make it grow. I know it's been hard, but we on the rise now. Push to the top, feel the highs now. Believe in yourself, anything's possible. Focus on the path, overcome obstacles, be a team player, follow your dream. Not by yourself, no I am team. Work together, getting it done, cause two heads are better than one, huh? Stay happy, we're having some fun, and get ready, cause here we come. I knew she would qualify for some sort of scholarship, but not this insane amount. <laughs> um, and I knew she would find a college that would work for her. So, but this helps a lot. Now we don't have to worry so much about it. We're definitely on board. We're very supportive. Uh, we definitely know that your students are very qualified um, and they are definitely looking at schools and they should be. And I really believe the more options students have, the better decision they can make when deciding on their future college choices, because there's so many different schools out there. This allowing them to look at all the options. The vibe is right, we feeling good. The time is now. Awesome. Congratulations. It's helped to see myself differently. It gives people looking at me differently showing me that I can do what I want to do. So definitely having these options will help a lot to um, help me further my education at the college level. So it's a, it's a, great, it's a great thing to uh, get us. I think that it's so important for these kids to see that, you know, they've worked hard for four years and that there is, there's benefit for that hard work for them personally. Right now, COVID is happening. Virtual world is happening but they're still getting this information to them. And they're still getting to have that um, opportunity to research schools. And for the students that are still considering and well, wanting to look at options, right. don't stop. You know what's really cool about this? It doesn't necessarily mean that if you receive a couple of scholarships and you choose not to accept them, and you choose to go work somewhere, that's still a win. Because how do we know that the scholarship offers gave that young person the confidence to charge out and, and follow into a path they really wanted that maybe had nothing to do with college. But the fact that they received these offers gave them that internal strength to say, I can do that. Or it could be that they go to the college and they say, you know what, this, this, this opens up a door for me that I thought would not open. I want to thank anybody and everybody that had any part of this. I think nowadays that finances usually, under most circumstances, are a driving force in making those decisions after graduation. So yeah, I just, we're so grateful to everybody involved. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I don't know if you saw me bawling my eyes out. Thank you for opening the doors for these kids. We just need that simple, simple door to be open for them and they will achieve. You're giving them what they need. Oftentimes when you're at school, you work hard because you want to work hard, right? But not all the time does that 
get recognized. Not all the time does all your extra effort really um, get taken into account. So when you do this, you are showing all these students who who try their best 110% of the time that it's worth it and that people are out there to help you get to where you want to go. So thank you so much. Let's make a difference together. So, we've seen stories that feature personalized learning, college and career readiness, and interpersonal skills, all part of our strategic objectives. Let's talk with the person who leads this vision and continues to follow our roadmap through this challenging and difficult time. Well, Dr. Fulton, welcome. Thank you for being with us here. Um, another great year for this uh, breakfast, and what uh, two years you've had, right? Uh, first you arrive here, new superintendent, you get to know Shawnee Mission School District, um, you get the strategic plan outlined, and then the world struck with COVID-19. Yeah, it's been quite the experience. You know, we had a great, a great time that first year as we engaged the community in the strategic plan process, got that up and running, and then uh, COVID-19 hits and uh, the world changes. But you know, Shawnee Mission is a great school district and we just kept right on going. And we'll get, we'll, we'll get through this uh, despite the challenges and we'll, we'll be better because of it. And I know everyone's excited to hear about your vision and what we're going to do to ensure that every single student in Shawnee Mission School District reaches their full potential. You know, that strategic plan matters. Uh, it's important that the community put it together. It belongs to the community and it's our vision for what can happen for every single one of our children if, as adults, we do our part to help them be successful in life. First of all, our teachers are doing a really great job of uh, learning new, new skill sets during this pandemic. Uh, we learned a lot from spring semester. That was a big shock for everybody. We didn't have all the tools in place that we needed. That's when we identified Canvas, and that Canvas is an information learning management system. It uh, allows students to access curriculum, assignments, grades in ways that are easy to navigate. And the good thing is, is that because it's one system that's used at all levels, elementary, middle, and high school, students, as they move through the system, become very familiar with how Canvas works, but also, very importantly, parents don't have to learn multiple systems. They can just use Canvas. Thank you for going through Canvas. What about the uh, systems? Well, one of the things that we've done is uh, we've used a tool called Thought Exchange. Thought Exchange is a platform that allows you to ask a question to a defined audience, and then that audience gets to provide feedback on how they uh, feel about that question. And then importantly, uh, not only do you get to provide feedback, on how you feel about the question, but others get to uh, respond to how uh, rank you basically on how they feel about their responses. Dr. Fulton, I am really glad to hear that equity inclusion is being included in the district plan. I think it's needed, um, particularly given the diversity of the Shine Mission School District. Equity inclusion is a really important concept to put into action, and it speaks to what we value, and importantly, whether or not we value some children or every child. And it, every child matters. Are there any examples of that in the district currently? You know, I think there are. We're, we're spending a lot of time training all of our staff on a, a strategy called deep equity. And basically it's really helping everybody to become culturally proficient. We need to uh, see, hear, and listen to one another. We need to see differences. We need to hear perspective. And importantly, we need to really listen so we understand uh, where each other's coming from in our unique life perspectives. And how are those lessons being utilized in the schools? One example of this, uh, in terms of the way in which it's manifesting itself in our schools, is uh, it comes from Apache Elementary School. One of our trainers 
in deep equity is a sixth grade teacher, is Monisha Slater. She noticed that black students uh, did not have a dedicated space in school that really supported them emotionally. She created a space for this to happen by creating a black student union. And so as a result of that, students now have a place to come together, to hear each other's perspective, to be affirmed, and to grow together. And that's, that's a great example of how one person, one teacher, uh, can make a difference in the life of the, of, uh, the children in, in, uh, this, in her school. It is, and that, it is impressive, particularly to have a, a black student union in the elementary school. One, that they recognize that it was a need, and two, that the community embraced it. Now, that says a lot about the Shawnee Mission School District. It really does. It's, it's exciting to think about what's possible going forward. Uh, Dr. Fulton, we know that 2020 has been difficult for parents, uh, it's been difficult for teachers, and definitely I know it's been difficult on your staff. Um, how is it, as a school district, do we address these issues, something so personal to individuals? I've often said, don't let the perfect get in the way of the good, because it's not gonna be a year of perfection, it's a year of learning. For example, uh, Amanda Harlow, who's a social worker at Comanche, has uh, something called calming kits. Dr. Fulton, what is a calming kit? Well, a calming kit are manipulatives. I have some of them here. Uh, and this is, this is a, a sensory maze. Rami, who's a student at Comanche, really loves this sensory maze. And it's just a marble, and you move things around. And see, I'm getting more calm as we're talking right. here. <laughs> and you can have other kinds of things that you can use to touch. But, you know, the point being, of course, you really reach out to students and make sure that they have the social emotional supports that they need as they're going through what we know is a very difficult time for them. And, and that's so important. And that's something, these type of things, and, and something all of us could use. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, that's also one of, the, uh, one of the reasons in our strategic plan that we identified what our needs that our educators have to help them be successful as they work with students. One of those needs that we've identified at the secondary level is giving our, our staff, our teachers, a bit more time to make sure that they can prepare the lessons in ways that they need to to ensure that students are successful in their learning. Now, given the restraints of the district and the needs of our students, how are we going to make that happen? Well, there are, there are a limited number of ways to do that, the way that uh, Kansas funds schools. And so what we're going to do is uh, we propose that we do a bond issue, and that as a result of that bond issue, we'll be able to free up some money in the capital fund that will allow us to move uh, some of our custodial maintenance salaries into capital, freeing up money in the operating fund so that we can set some of that money aside. And then teachers at the secondary level will get an additional period that they can use to help reduce their teaching workload and in turn meet some of those important strategic plan objectives that we've talked about earlier. How does the, the bond issue and the funding plans, how does that benefit our students and their needs? Yeah, great question. It benefits our students in a number of ways. Everything from having really comfortable learning environments to be in to meeting their individual needs. So for example, we have a student, Danny Robinson, who's in a wheelchair. The fact that our bond issue allows us to do ADA accessible playgrounds makes a difference in his life because now he's able to engage in activities that other children also are able to engage in. And so those, that's one example of how facilities matter in the life of all of our children and the life of every child that we serve. Dr. Fulton, thank you for being here this morning. Um, we've heard so many great stories about our kids, about our staff, and the things they are going through during the midst of this pandemic. But we're gonna come out on the other side. So what is your vision once all this is done and we move on to our next stage? Well, the stories speak not only to the present, but to the future. We have such a great school district. Yes, we're in a very difficult time, both locally and globally. 
But that will end one day. And when it does, the foundation that we're laying today becomes our strength going forward. And so that's, that to me is very exciting, but we have a very, very bright future in front of us. And it's gonna keep astronomy mission strong. strong. Jethro Travera and her family moved to Shawnee Mission when she was in the sixth grade. She attended Apache IS, West Ridge Middle School, and Shawnee Mission West High School. As a scholarship Shawnee Mission recipient, Jessel is a freshman at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Her story, like many others, is Shawnee Mission strong. Even before we met Jetzel, we had heard how hardworking and how motivated she was. And then when she joined the 2019 Leadership Shawnee Mission class, we really saw that in action. She was always looking to better herself, so she always kept her options open and always was very ambitious in you know, what type of life did she want to have. I always told her, you got to do what you love because you don't want to work a day in your life. Like you want to go get up every morning and be like, this is what I love. You know, I'm going to work, be excited about it. I first met her the first day of Leadership Shawnee Mission 2019, and my first impression of her was that she was bubbly and positive and really excited to be there and really open to new experiences and making new friends and just kind of experiencing um, everything that we were going to throw at her um, during that three week time period. Actually, the internship confirmed that I wanted to do art history because I didn't know that much about it. I've only heard it through my art teacher at Shawnee Mission West. I know that there is many options within the museum. And I also learned that I actually really like little kids and the art classes. So I hope to maybe implement that somehow, work with that. And it's working out so far. I love my art history class. Jetzel and I connected through the Photo Scholars Program at the Nelson. And through the critiques, I started to see like she had a pure natural talent that she could build off of. I felt like she had a really good voice, and I still feel like you know if she continues on, she's just going to make great strides in the future with her work. She wants to speak out for Hispanic women. She wants to get us out there. I'm an immigrant. I came from Mexico, you know, and I did go to school here, but um, I still have a lot of my culture and I think that has a lot to do with her. And she's always told me, you know, I'm proud that you've always been so strong and you showed me work hard. Last year when she was offered over $700,000 in scholarships from Scholarship Shawnee Mission, and I think what that did for her was really encourage her. And I think encourage that ambition to kind of understand, okay, if, if schools are willing to offer me this much in, in scholarships, you know, almost a mindset of what can I not do. I'm glad to hear that she is doing well at UMKC. I'm uh, very proud that she's a West grad and that represents Shawnee Mission West well. My sister goes to Shawnee Mission West and I always am putting it in her head, do good in school, you know, make sure to get that scholarship, you know, participate in leadership, Shawnee Mission, make connections. Like this networking that I have helps a lot for my future career. You know, it's gonna be a long time until she gets there, but um, I feel like she, that's what she wants and she's heading that way. I'm pretty sure she's gonna be great at it. In a world where change is the only certainty and flexibility and innovation build character, the Shining Mission School District continues to be distinguished by an inclusive culture and engaged community where the students are provided robust opportunities to challenge them to achieve their full potential. And yes, make no doubt about it, we are Shawnee Mission Strong.
to give you 